Hi everyone, Ainsley here from Small Fry Creations and this week I'm going to show you how you can make a barn door on a budget. That's right, you've seen it. Today we are going to make a beautiful barn door on a budget with just a couple of tools. We're going to take this solid door that we've picked up from Bunnings for $130 and the first step we need to do is attach this timber to the bottom so that we can get the door to the right height. So I say let's go ahead and let's get started. I'll run through the particulars of the door and what you need to know a little later in this video. I will also have a number of tips when hanging the barn door that I learnt through installing two doors. I will also tell you at the top of this video, the total cost for each barn door including hardware, paint and the door was $300. When researching this project, most purpose built doors started at $500 without any hardware, so I think this is a great option. My first step was to cut the timber down for the extension of the door. If you don't need to add an extension, you can skip this part of the video. I'm making two barn doors, one for the bathroom and one for the living room. The bathroom door required an extension of 70mm. The door thickness is 40mm, so my first step was to cut the timber to the right thickness, which I did on the table saw. When cutting timber like this, I like to do it in a couple of passes. Once the door was at the right thickness, I could cut it down to 70mm wide and cut it to length on the miter saw. Alright, I've got my piece of timber cut and it is ready to be attached to the door, but before I do so, I'm going to take it one step further. Now, before you start this project, you want to really make sure that you read through the instructions and understand what the requirements are. Mine came with two different options to keep the door tracking straight and the stuff that you attach to the ground. There's these guys, which is really simple. You just attach it to the ground on either side of the door, or you can go with the option that I'm going to use, and it's this guy, but this one requires a groove down the middle of the bottom of the door. Now, because my piece is not attached, I'm going to take advantage of that and use the table saw to cut that groove but if you're using a door that's already ready to go you want to use a router with a straight edge to cut that groove in or go with the really simple guy totally up to you but you'll want to take the time to read through the instructions before you start anything so let's go ahead and let's work on the groove following my barn door hardware instructions I needed to cut a groove that was 20 mil high and 7 mil wide To attach the extensions to the door, I went with dowels. You could just go with glue, but I thought dowels would help with alignment. You just want to make sure that you drill as straight as possible so that you get a clean and straight joint. I first drilled holes in the extension piece. I could then insert these dowel points and line the piece up with the door and tap on the extension piece with a hammer. The dowel points leave marks in the door so you know where to drill the corresponding holes. It was then onto the stressful glue up. I have never glued anything up this large and I made sure I had everything I needed before I started so I wasn't running around like a mad woman in the middle of the glue up. There are a couple of options for clamps for this glue up. I went with the two clamps clamped together, but you could always use ratchet straps. I just didn't have any on hand, so I went with what I had. After a couple of hours in clamps, I could remove them and putty the seams. I got a very tight joint, but the edge of the door has a very slight bevel, so some putty was needed. We've got our door all extended and the putty is just drying so we're now up to the point where we can make the jig for our router to run along to create the pattern on the door. Now of course you can do any pattern you like, for us we're going to keep it really simple and just do straight lines up and down. I'm going to take this piece of melamine that I have got and I'm going to cut it into strips and create a very simple jig for my router to run along. Now you could just take this melamine, use it as a single straight edge and make your lines, but I don't want my router to drift at all away from those straight lines. So I'm going to get two pieces and then screw them together so that the router can't move in the jig left to right and that way I can make sure I've got straight lines for the length of the door. So while that's drying we're going to get this jig made, by the time we have that hopefully we'll be up to the point where we can draw some lines. Depending on what pattern you choose to go with, I would strongly suggest you take the time to make a jig for the router. The last thing you want to have happen is your router to move from your straight edge and your hard work and door be ruined. I cut 100mm strips from the melamine and used my router to put the pieces the right distance apart and use shorter pieces to screw everything together. With my jig created, it was onto the most stressful part of the build, routing the lines in the door. I took the time off camera to use scrap wood and ensure my spacing was correct because if my lines were not straight or not evenly spaced then the door again would be ruined. I would mark the top, middle and bottom of the door and line up my jig with these marks. 
Using a V-bit, I would take it slow with the router to ensure a clean cut. You can do this, Ains. Don't stop it up. Let's do this. Let's see if this worked. It looks straight. Hard to know though. Woo! Woo! Worked. While I route these grooves on the door, allow me to run over some things that I have learnt through this process that I think will help you if you want to tackle this project. When choosing a door, you want a solid door. If you were to go with a hollow core door, there would not be enough meat for the hardware to attach to. For those out there watching this from Australia, and if you choose to get your doors from Bunnings like I did, you want to look for STPC on the door tag. This means it's solid. The doors I am using are external, but they are only rated external because they are solid and they will be fine for internal use. This is also a great option if you're using your door as a bathroom door because it will stand up to the moisture. These doors are going into an older apartment block, so the door heights in particular are not standard, hence the reason for the extension. If you have a newer doorway, the standard height is 2040mm, so you could always get a door that is 2100 and either use it at that length or cut it down to size according to your barn door instructions. The hardware I am using was also purchased from Bunnings and worked with door thicknesses from 35mm to 45mm and up to 100 kilos, which will be fine for the doors I chose. I'll be sure to leave links to all the things I have used in this build in the description below. And hey, while you're looking down in the description, be sure to hit those subscribe and like buttons so you don't miss out on future videos. I won't bore you with the days I spent painting the doors, I'll simply tell you that I applied an undercoat and three top coats. The colour that was chosen was Torben Sea Command. We're up to the point where we're going to install our door pulls and I'm not going to run into too many measurements because yours may be very different to mine. My number one biggest suggestion is to grab some plywood and do some practice ones on here before you do it on the real thing. I made two mistakes before I did it on the third time right and I'm so glad that I did it on here first before doing it on the door and ruining it. So that is my very big suggestion. Now you're gonna use the same shred edge that you use to cut the grooves in, and then you're just gonna to have to get the measurements, like I said, based on what your door pulls are. But I'm gonna mount the flushed ones here in the workshop, and then I'll put the handles on on site just because of transport reasons, and that just makes it a little bit easier. I need to route mine depth to a 10 mil. I'm gonna do it nice and slow on the router and take really shallow passes because I don't want the router to move to make any mistakes. I've already done it on the door behind me, Came out perfect so I just need to rinse and repeat on this one and then we're up to very final coats on the doors and we are ready for transportation to get on site. A couple of tips when installing flush door pulls like this. When using the router and making a plunge cut, I made sure when entering the router into the wood I would angle the router to stop the bit from biting on the wood. I took my time and did very shallow passes and this allows me to have good control of the router. The doors were ready to be carefully packed into the car and transported to site. Install day. Firstly, allow me to introduce you to my amazing brother-in-law, Alex, who will be my assistant on the install. Firstly, following the instructions, I measured and marked where the barn door hardware needed to go on the door and installed. We next measured where on the wall the bar needed to be installed. A little tip, if you are dealing with uneven floors like we were, you want to measure from the highest point and level the bar from that point. This will stop the door from catching on the floor when in place. We were drilling into concrete, so I didn't need to worry about where the studs were and I used a hammer drill to drill the holes. I used a point and a hammer and marked where the holes needed to go and drilled just deep enough for the wall plugs to go in. We could then grab the bar along with the spacers and bolt the bar to the wall. With the bar securely in place, we added the door stopper and we could put the door on and see all our hard work come together. 
However, our celebration was quickly stopped when we realised the door got caught on the floor, hence my earlier tip. We removed the door and I cut 5mm off the bottom and it worked perfectly. Crisis averted. For the bathroom door, we needed to cut the 2 metre bar down to fit in the space. I did this with an angle grinder and a cutoff wheel. It was as simple as rinse and repeat on the first steps to get the bar into place and put the door onto the tracks, which went smoothly. To keep the door tracking at the bottom and stop it from rubbing along the skirting boards, we installed runners to the floor, which given we were going into timber floors, was as simple as pre-drilling and screwing them into place. The last step was to install the door handle on the front side. A tip I picked up a little while ago was to use blue tape to mark where I needed to drill. I applied blue tape to the back of the handle and with a pencil rubbed over where the screw holes needed to go. I then marked where the centre was on the tape and I could place the tape on the door in position. I placed the tape on the back of the door as I wanted the front handle to line up with the back handle so the screws wouldn't look out of place. I installed the door handles and we could call this project complete. This may be my favourite project as the transformation to the space was incredible and the doors were simple but challenging at the same time. I hope you have liked this project and if you have, let me know by hitting that like button. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and I'll see you on the next one.